Well, good evening. This is my 5.1 uh, post response. This week we're looking at uh, Gary Thomas's book, Sacred Pathways. Uh, and I very much enjoyed this book. It's been very thought-provoking. Uh, I've often thought that I have learned differently than others about the Lord, um, that I've connected with Him in a different way. Um, and I've never really thought about how there's different um, pathways, different sacred pathways. Obviously, there's only one path to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. But I've never thought necessarily about that there's anything else besides uh, reading your Bible, praying, meditating. I kind of always thought that those were the, the pathways, the sacred pathways that, that, that every Christian has to take. You know, And I think I've even been guilty in my preaching in, in the young adult ministry that I lead. And, you know, I think oftentimes I've stressed reading your Bible alone time, quiet time, like Thomas talks about how this was a big in the 70s and 80s, the stress on having a quiet time, having a quiet time, having a quiet time, and but often, which is a good thing, it's good to read your Bible, it's good to pray, it's good to meditate, um, but that's not how, as Thomas is saying, it's not how everybody connects with the Lord, and it's, uh, there's other ways that you can supplement that as well. Um, I really like this quote that he has on page 15. He says, the casualties of mechanized uh, mechan uh, religion are many. It's one thing to witness spiritually empty people outside the church. It's even sadder to see Christians inside the church who suffer the same spiritual emptiness. Ultimately, it's a matter of spiritual nutrition. And so the first question was, have I fallen into this expectation that there's this one-size-fits-all uh one size fits all sacred pathway, and I, absolutely I did. I mean, through youth group, uh, even you know after is read your Bible and pray, read your Bible, pray, read your Bible, pray, read your Bible, pray. And I never thought about that there was different pathways um, to experiencing the love of God, to experiencing the person of Jesus Christ. I always just thought it was like I gotta get up early in the morning, gotta get up at four o'clock. You know, I gotta get up at four, gotta pray for an hour, gotta read, gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. And all the while, you know, I was feeling down on myself because I wasn't doing that. Um, and so I have definitely compared myself to other people. You know, you hear stories of Martin Luther who would get up and pray for three or four hours before he even started his day. And I'm like, man, I just cannot do that, you know. My wife gets up at five o'clock and she reads her Bible and she prays. And I'm like, I, Lord, I just cannot do that. And so I've definitely compared uh, my spiritual pathways to others. Um, and I just thought this was amazing. And there's a couple different um, pathways that I resonate with. And the first one is loving God through the outdoors. And the second one was loving God uh, like with our minds and through theology and talking about that. Um, I have a, a mentor that's different from this class, but I have a mentor who lives in Kentucky um, and has given me some amazing advice, but so I'm huge into hunting. I'm I'm really into the outdoors, and I, you know, when I'm not in the outdoors, I can feel myself slipping from my relationship with Christ. And two years ago, um, my mentor Kevin and I were talking about this: how essential it is for me to uh, be in the outdoors, to get my hands dirty to climb up a tree and, you know, and hunt like, you know, in the times between October to January during hunting season, that's when I feel very close to the Lord and I never thought about it. And it's because, you know, I really experience God and I experience the Holy Spirit uh, through the outdoors and through seeing his creation. Like, you know, as I see, um, you know, geese flying into a field, uh, I, I experience the awe and wonder and beauty of God, um, and so that's that's one of my sacred pathways is being in the outdoors. Uh, the second thing, like I said, was loving God with my mind. Uh, Thomas says intellectuals need their minds to be stirred before their hearts come truly alive. They are likely to be studying and, in some instances, instances arguing either for or against topics such as Calvinism, infant baptism, ordination of women, and predestination. These Christians live in the world of concepts and. And that's the other side of me too. So I love being in the outdoors. I love experiencing God through his creation and seeing the sunrise and watching the world wake up. It's amazing to see the order that God has put into creation. 
Uh, but it's all. I also love the intellectual side. I love debating Calvinism as terrible as <laughs> as terrible of a theology as that is. Um, I love debating Calvinism. I love just talking about theology, working out faith, and it's in those discussions that I truly feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I, I feel closer. It draws me closer to the Lord. And so these two pathways are are two of the things that um, that have that really help me. Um, connect with the Lord. So, so far this book has been so um, freeing. It's been so freeing um, just to know that I, you know, it's okay that I, I'm not the person that is going to get up every day at four o'clock and pray for an hour and read my Bible for an hour, you know, and um, that this has been very, very helpful and I'm very excited uh, to continue on reading this book.